Hi again, I'm Katie and I'm going to be talking about building talks with Reveal.js with React. So I am currently a senior prospect developer. Um, I recently changed jobs about three months ago. I've just actually pressed for probation, which would be exciting. Um, so yeah, um, I've used Reveal a couple of times for some previous talks, uh, kind of just to try it out really. Um, I thought it looked quite fun. I've seen a few people use this framework. Um, I just want to see what it was like. So hopefully you learn something from this and you might even want to give it a go. Um, but let's get started. So the slides are accessible via this QR code or the link. Um, if you do want to follow along with them um, or go through them at your own pace, uh, but don't worry if you like see something halfway through and you're like, oh, I really want to get that link. Oh, I wish I'd got the um, like slides up at the beginning because I will be referencing at, like at the end. Um, so yeah, don't worry about like quickly trying to get it now. Um, but I'll just give you like a second longer and then we'll move on. Okay, so what is Reveal.js? Basically what it is, is a framework for creating presentations with HTML. And one of the cool things is about it is that it's open source. So if you wanted to like get really into it and contribute back to it, um, you could do. So the slide that you've just seen, uh, this is the code for it. Uh, if you like, have used React before, you'll probably find this quite familiar. Uh, you can see that we've got a component called about reveal slide. And then within that, we've got like a section and some headings and things like that. So how reveal uh, knows that this is a slide is because of that section. What we do is we just import this um, about reveal slide into this like master list of slides and it like does some magic and puts them all together for you. Uh, and that section is how it like defines it. What I've done also is I've given it this property which is um, data transition equals fade. And this just tells uh, reveal that I want to have like a fade effect when you go between the slides. The rest of it is pretty straightforward. I've got a H3, which is the heading. Um, and I've also got um, a side at the bottom uh, with the class notes. And that is how Reveal knows that uh, I want these to have some uh, speaker notes. So like on my other screen, I've got some speaker notes up uh, and what it's saying is what is Reveal.js. So what are some of the features of Reveal? So as I mentioned, it is a HTML presentation library. So you can use all of your favorite web libraries, frameworks, which in this case, you know, probably most people here are interested in React. Uh, so you can definitely use React for it. Of course, you could also use things like Angular, or if you don't want to use any libraries at all, you could just do it like with plain HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's completely up to you. And it does have a bunch of plugins and themes built in. So it has some plugins such as like code snippets. So you saw before I had um, that slide with some code on it. Uh, it's really easy to do that with Reveal. You don't need to have any kind of external software doing it for you, which I found in the past when I was doing um, slide decks in something like Keynote, I was using um, a software called Carbon, I think it was. And you like copy and paste your code into it and it like does some formatting and spits you out this nice PNG, which then you can just import onto your slide which is great, it works um, and it looks really good, uh, but it's just a little bit faffy and having to use like an external piece of software just takes a little bit of time. Um, so it's really cool that you can use built-in um, like features while you're doing the code. There's also Markdown. So if you're familiar with Markdown and you want to build some slides with it, um, that's total, totally doable. And also Math, if you're doing some presentations with like, equations and that kind of thing. Um, it does a lot of like formatting. Um, I think it uses maybe latex on the back end. I'm not sure, um, but it, it's really cool and it looks really nice. Uh, there are also themes. So built in, I think there's like 10 themes, uh, which just changes. They're just like CSS files basically. Um, so it's really easy to get like a nice looking presentation right out of the box. Uh, and then you can just add your own like overriding CSS if you want, which I think is what I've done for this. I used like their I think black and white theme and edged added some colors and, and things like that. And also there is a um, no code editor online. So I haven't used it, but I do know that you don't need to, need to know any programming for it. So you can just like build your reveal um, slides online and then export them. And then I guess you could like either add the code, um, add some code later on, or you can maybe upload your code and that kind of thing. Um, it just means that if you say working on a presentation with some friends who don't know how to pr pr like program, then you can do that, which is pretty cool. 
So if you're uh, familiar with NPM and Node, that kind of thing, um, it's really easy to install Reveal. There is a NPM package available and you just pull it in um, like any other um, Node module and then you can like give it some parameters to initialize it um, and then you can actually initialize it. So in this case, um, it's just got the Markdown plugin um, and then it kind of loads up and does all of the, the fun stuff for you. Um, you can also use it without uh, like no modules, no NPM. Uh, if you just want to use it with like plain uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, I think you can just pull in like a script um, from like a CDN. So it's pretty easy to set up either way, to be honest. So I've mentioned some of the facts about Reveal, but why do I think that you should use it? I really, really like that you can build it with all of your favorite libraries and all of the knowledge that you already have. You know, this deck that I'm showing you right now was bootstrapped with Create React app. Um, it was just because I knew how to use it and I wanted to get something up running quickly. And it also means that everything feels really familiar. Um, it didn't feel like there was any kind of steep learning curve when I was building this. Of course, you know, when you start using any new framework or library or whatever, like you have to have a quick Google to see like, you know, how do I do this? Um, how do I define a slide? How do I get the speaker notes? Um, but they're all very natural because they're all um, like HTML elements in Reveal. So everything just felt very straightforward and it made sense, which was really nice. I also really like that you can create boilerplates like any with like any web app. Um, you know, it can be cool to get like a really basic version of your app, like in a nice state where you've maybe got things like linting and um, everything works, but it's very minimal. And then you can just go on and extend that later on. Things like layouts as well. Um, kind of a React feature is, you know, you can have your higher order components and you can um, pass in children and build like nice layouts and things like that. Um, and it just works really, really well with Reveal because you're going to have times where maybe you want like two columns on your slide. So you could set up a layout that does that for you. And also similarly with reusable components, um, React is quite keen on you reusing components and making um, components that can be changed with maybe props to modify and things like that. And it just all works really, really well together. So this is the code for the slide earlier. I haven't changed anything about it, but you can again see that we've got the section and we've got the aside um, and that's cool, it works. It's quite a, I guess, minimal example, like none of these slides are particularly um, complex or really busy, but I guess you can imagine if you were doing um, slides with a little bit more content on them, um, this could get quite large quite quickly. So what I've done here is I've made a little layout component uh, called slide with title. And what it does is it takes a title prop, um, which in this case, it was uh, what is revealed JS. And it just takes in the children as well and puts it out on the screen, which is great. As I said, it's not a particularly complex, uh, complex layout or anything, but it just makes your life a little bit easier because you just need to type a little bit less. And it's the same with the note as well. I've added an, a little custom note component which takes in the contents and then um, like applies it. So like before, can you see how we had the like content? It just just slightly smaller. Uh, the grand scheme of things is not going to make a massive difference. But as I said, if your slides start to get really big um, and there's lots of different elements and lots of different repeating um, elements, like why not make some usable components? So as I mentioned, you can use your favorite libraries. So I really like uh, styled components for doing my styling. It's just think that I've used at work and then, um, yeah, just got to know really well. So I like using it for my styling. So in this case, um, I just wanted to see what it would be like. Uh, so if you are familiar with styled components, you can see I've kind of got that styled H3 where I've just applied some colors and font family. Um, and then I've used that styled header just as my header component. I would say with this, um, I did have to use those three ands because I had some problems with classes like conflicting with each other. And um, basically, if you were to do this yourself, I'd recommend not mixing things like global CSS and styled components because it, it just gets a whole big mess, to be honest. Um, if I was to do this again, um, I'd do the whole app with styled components and then I wouldn't need those like awkward triple and things um, to make sure that the style is like definitely applied and it's not overwritten. Um, but yeah, that was just, just for an example. So we do have CSS animation. 
So I found this really awesome um, code pen online from this person called Isa who uh, did this animation. I am really, really bad at CSS animation. Maybe one day I'll get good at it. But if you are someone who is, um, you know, one of these whizzes at it, like why not use it in your slides? You know, you've got this skill. Why not apply it to your slides and make them look really amazing? I think is it Cassie Evans who does like really amazing um, CSS animations. I think she's done one where it's like some like handwriting. It's like a name handwritten and it's got like this little cute little bounce thing. It just looks so amazing. And I think if you could turn it up with some slides that had that on, like it'd be amazing. Your audience would be like, wow, look at those slides. So yeah, if, you, if you've got the skills, why not use them? And I also really like that you can host the slides online. You know, this is just a static um, HTML site that I've built um, from Create React app. So it means that you can host it online um, a lot of the times for free on things like GitHub pages and Netlify. And um, it's very easy just to set up that to deploy there. It means that some people who prefer going through slides at their own pace can go through them at their own pace. And also it's very easy for them to be referenced later. You know, I've just, um, posted these slides on a subdomain on my personal e uh, personal email, personal domain, just for ease. But like you could post it wherever you want. You could have like a dedicated domain for all your slides if you wanted. And I really like that it's accessible on mobile without any um, additional software. Um, yeah, because it is just a website. Like you don't need to download Keynote on your phone or um, Google Slides or anything like that. It's just kind of there. And it's really responsive as well. Um, with the asterisks, I think a couple of the images on this slide deck are like fixed width. So they might look pretty bad, but apart from that, uh, Reveal like handles a lot of it for you. So by default, it ends up being really responsive. You just have to make sure that when you're making the slides that they, they are responsive and not just having fixed width like I do. I guess one thing um, that Lindsay mentioned earlier, like accessibility is really important. And um, because they are just a website, it means that you can go through it with like a screen reader. So if someone can't um, like see your slides, they could at least like have it on their phone or have it on their own laptop and go through it at the same time. So why might you not want to use Reveal? You know, there is downsides to every single framework, um, both like factual um, downsides and just downsides like that you might not like, other people might like. So it is a pretty common joke that no modules is pretty astronomical at times. Like you can end up with a lot of your storage taken up just by mod no modules. Um, I think at the point of editing these slides last night, I think the node modules for this slide deck was like 200 meg, maybe, three, maybe 300. Like it was quite a lot considering I don't have a lot installed. However, on the flip side, um, if you've just got some slides like stored on your laptop that you're not going to be accessing, there's nothing stopping you obviously from just deleting the node modules and reinstalling them when you do need it. And of course, you can as well um, store your slides on Git. Um, so you're not going to take up any storage at all. And, you know, with um, normal web apps, when you store it on Git, you don't start with the node modules. So it makes it nice and small. I think also if you use something like Keynote, you'd probably be aware that the slides can get pretty big as well on those. Um, I think I went through a phase of trying to store my keynote slides on GitHub and it used to take like a minute to push every time. It was not a good, not a good system. So there's kind of cons there, but it's kind of a thing that seems to be with most slide creation software. I do also think that there is a little bit of potential rabbit hole um, when it comes to making your slides. You know, you might set up your repo and then you'd be like, okay, well, I want to add some linting, maybe I want to add prettier, that kind of thing. And then you think, okay, well, I'm gonna deploy this. So this is this site is deployed on Netlify. So you might add like a really simple um, CI CD pipeline um, that maybe run your um, like linting tools and things like that. And then you think, well, do I add tests? I feel like that's a little bit too far for a slide deck to add tests, but it is also like a web app, so you think, do I test? Is that, yeah. Um, in the end, I didn't, but it was definitely that whole of thinking, okay, I want to make this repo like beautiful, have everything look perfect. You know, I want to follow all the best practices and things like that. And you spend hours and hours doing this when really you should have just been making the slides. So yeah, maybe it's just me, but if you're like a perfectionist, you might also fall into this rabbit hole. 
I think also some of the layouts um, are definitely going to take longer if you're using code rather than like a traditional presentation software where you might be doing like drag and drop. Um, you know, if you want to add like some some background images, um, some things are really easy. Um, depending on like your CSS skill, like adding a background is probably quite straightforward. But if you're trying to add some like I don't know, like decorative squares or some one like CSS animation, like that kind of thing is going to take you longer than if you just like drag and drop and do that kind of thing on a normal piece of software. Um, but it's yeah, it's very much up to you, I guess, how far you take it and and what your skill level is as well. And honestly, sometimes you just don't feel like writing code. Like, you know, if you do it for a day job, you're doing it what like 40, 50 hours a week. Do you really want to go home and then do some more for coding um, for your slides? Like. I go through phases where I absolutely love coding and I finish work. I'm like, yes, I'm going to work on something, I'm going to be productive. And then some days I'm just like, no, I just don't even want to look at code for the next week. Like, I'm done. So, you know, it's fine either way. Just take this into account when you start your slides. Like, are you going to be able to see it through to the end? Are you going to find it really hard going because you maybe got like some deadlines at work and, you know, using some code on an evening as well as your day job? It just might be a bit too much. So if you do think that you want to give Reveal a go, I have just added some links here. So um, you can check out the like official website for Reveal. Um, I've linked the slides as in like this actual deck, the nice pretty deck. Um, and I've also linked the repository for the code. Um, so feel free to check those out. I would just say take the, the repo with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Um, there's definitely things I've brushed and you know where I've, for example, um, done both like global CSS files and then the styles components and they've like they're trying to fight each other. Um, you know that that was that would be the kind of thing that I wouldn't recommend you try and do. But you know as a whole, if you want to see like how I've done it with Create React, um, just the general gist of it, like feel free to take a look, have a copy, do whatever. Well, thank you very much. That's it from me.